In this lecture, I'll show you how to set up a survey. I'll start by going to the settings icon in the top right corner of my window and then choosing add an app. When the page reloads, I'll go to the find an app search box and type in survey. I hit enter on the keyboard and that pops up for me two different types of surveys. I'm going to choose just the regular survey that comes with SharePoint. This opens up the adding survey window. Now you could type the name of your survey here or you can click on advanced options in the lower left corner. And when I do that, you'll notice that in this window, not only can you type in the name, but the description and some other options that I'll go over in a moment. But I usually go to this window first. And the reason that I do this is because, and I'll show you, I'll click on cancel. When I'm in the adding survey window, and I type a name, and I'll just type in a test name here, and then say I want to add a description, when I click on advanced options, notice that that name is no longer in the name box. So when I have my adding survey window open, I always click on advanced options first. All right, so here I am, and I'll go ahead and add in a name, and I'm not going to be creating a fully functional survey here. I'm just showing you the setup, and then a little bit later on, we will be creating our very first survey. So here, I'll put in the name of, again, test name. And I'm making sure that right now the name is just all one word. Here I'm using camel case, but I could have also used an underscore. And the reason being is that this name is going to be part of my URL. And if there's any spaces in the name, it's going to show up as a percent sign in the URL. I don't want that, and databases really don't like spaces in between names anyway. So here I'll call it test name. Now I can always change the name after the initial setup if I want to. That'll be no problem. But you should always check with your SharePoint administrator to learn if your company has a specific naming convention that you should follow. Then, of course, you can add in a description. And a description is really helpful so that other people will know exactly what this survey is for. Again, this is just a test, so I'll put in a helpful description. Next, I have my survey options. The first one is if I want to show the usernames in the results. Now, if I choose no, the usernames will show up as asterisks but be aware that this feature can be turned on and off and it doesn't guarantee that anyone is gonna stay anonymous. So I'll just go ahead and leave that as yes for now. The next option is whether or not I want to allow multiple responses. This is a feature that I only turn on when I'm creating and testing the survey. This way I can test out multiple scenarios if I have branching logic. You're gonna learn about branching logic a little bit later on in this course. So I'll go ahead and say yes, because I'm gonna be doing multiple tests. And once I'm done testing the survey, then I'll come back here to my settings and I'll change that back to no. I'll go ahead and click on next. And now you're ready to start creating your questions. But first, we need to get familiar with the different types of answers that can be returned.